Welcome to the next episode of my Learn With Me Hydrosynth series. This is episode 3, Oscillators 1 and 2. So to quickly recap, this Learn With Me series is a series where you can follow my end-to-end -end process of learning and hopefully getting the best out of the Ashen Sound Machines Hydrosynth Explorer. In case you're not aware, the Hydrosynth was a 49-key synthesizer with a polyphonic aftertouch keyboard. The Hydrosynth Explorer is a more compact version using the same sound engine. So far, I've given you my initial impressions, I've talked about the general architecture, and I've demonstrated using Oscillator 3, which is a simplified oscillator. Today, what I'm going to do is demonstrate Oscillators 1 and 2, probably by demonstrating Oscillator 1. First, let me get an initialized patch. Let me check the mixer. Only oscillator one is turned up. Go to the oscillator one page. We have two pages here compared to only one page for oscillator three because we can select the mode, either single or wave scan. Single mode is the mode that oscillator three is in, so we've already seen that. So I'm going to focus on the wave scan mode. In wave scan mode, we have the same regular detune parameters as we did of oscillator three. We also have the key track and we have an additional control here, wave scan, which allows us to scan between the waves. What the waves are, are the individual waveforms, which can be thought of as entries in a wave table. So essentially what we're doing here is constructing a wave table or a wave list as it's called here. So what we can do is we have eight entries, each one, we can independently select, I can select a triangle for all of those, and then wave scan through those. Alternately, there is a shortcut, which is if you hold shift, when you turn, it will set the waveforms to sequential waveforms from the list. So when I set wave one to horizon one, all of the eight waveforms become the eight hori um, horizon wave entries. So now the wave list is complete. So now what I can do is manually, if I wish, wave scan. Already sounding pretty interesting. What I think I would like to do as well is add Oscillator 2, and I'd like to use a different wavetable. So in the mixer section, let's bring Oscillator 2 up. In fact, let's try and solo Oscillator 2, so Oscillator 1 won't play. So this is only Oscillator 2, which currently is in single mode. I'm going to change it to wave scan mode. I'm going to go to edit, and I'm going to pick another one of the... Go past horizon. Let's see what we've got. And maybe the spec'd one will be interesting. So it actually only has um, seven entries in the wavetable, so I'm going to turn the eighth one to off. So in this case, I have these seven waveforms in the wavetable. Okay, that already works reasonably well. Now, I don't really want to go into creating modulations here, but what I might do is create a macro assignment. So what I can do is I can hold down macro assign, and then I can pick something that I want to edit, and then I can assign it somewhere. So this can go to Oscillator 1, and this one, I guess, goes to Oscillator 2. Oops, that's not what I meant to do. So destination 1 is set, destination 2 is going to go to Oscillator 2. And the parameters I want to be setting here are the wave scan value. And this one is also going to be the wave scan value. So what I would like to do then is I would like to have the wave tables move in opposite directions. So what I'm going to do is for those macros, that's macro one that I'm editing, I 
going to go to oscillator 2 and I'm going to set the wave oops I don't want to detune it I'm going to set the wave scan to eight. and then in my macro assignment I'm going to set oops which one did I do again oscillator 2 is the one that needs to be negatively modulated so assign macro this one is going to be positively modulated I think 100 is going to be the correct value, but it's unclear to me whether I need 127 or 100. So let's just try that out. And then this other one I'm going to have, let's say, minus 100. Again, I don't know if 100 is the correct value for this, but I'm just going to go with it. So those are both done. I can go to the mixer section and I can unsolo. So now both oscillators are on. And So a good way to test this would be actually with solo. But definitely oscillator two is moving. With solo again. Oscillator one is moving. So let's bring them both in again. So even though I haven't really introduced macros, I think you can see that it was fairly straightforward. I was able to say for this macro, macro one, one of my destinations is one of the oscillators wave scan, one of them is one of the other oscillators wave scan. I set a positive and negative. I also noticed there's a thing in there called button value, which I think allows me to use these buttons to jump to some instantaneous value. I left that at zero. So all I need to do, I think, to turn this into something that I can play is add a bit of velocity sensitivity, Maybe a touch of LFO. Um, LFO here, a little velocity sensitivity here. So I'm not actually really fine tuning any of these parameters. I'm just really experimenting with them. And then for this envelope, I go for something like a pad again, like I did last time. It to me sounds like this is a bit fast, so even though again I haven't introduced LFOs, I'm just going to go and set those LFOs down a bit. So one thing I noticed in the last episode, and I've noticed again this episode, is it's tempting to make really long releases but if I play a fairly large chord, then I'm going to hit voice ceiling because this is an eight voice synthesizer. Um, you can obviously adjust your playing to account for that. And I, there are definitely plenty of eight voice synthesizers that are perfectly usable, but just as an FYI, if you heard that, that was indeed voice ceiling. Let me add some effects quickly, just to make this more interesting. Maybe a flanger. Stereo delay. Some reverb, maybe a plate reverb. Post effect that sounds interesting. Let's try this lo fi. So now I'm going to have the macros visible here. I could have mapped it maybe to the mod wheel, but.
so we're just using two oscillators and some very very rough and ready modulation which I will introduce more properly when we move into those sections. So though I was only intending to demonstrate the oscillators, the architecture of this synthesizer means that the oscillators themselves don't have that much in the way of um, interesting parameters because the mutants are what is intended to provide that. So I had to look for some movement elsewhere because I didn't want to introduce the mutants because I consider those a slightly more complicated topic. So. I went for a macro assignment, and I think that demonstrates nicely that macros are fairly easy to assign and they're fairly quick to use. You have eight targets for each macro, and this is in addition to the 32 destination mod matrix. Um, basic patch, basic envelope shaping, little bit of effects. For me, it sounds surprisingly good and um, quite playable with the macro parameter, and I could imagine mapping all of those macros to provide some even more interesting sounds. So in any case, um, I think that was all I wanted to demonstrate today. I would like to say that I hope you've been enjoying this series so far. I hope you'll join me for some more of this series. But in any case, and most importantly, thank you very much for watching and goodbye.